The looming threat of water scarcity has become a stark reality for millions of Gauteng residents. As climate change intensifies, experts warn that day zero, a day when municipal water supplies run dry, could be just five years away. That's hard to make sense of, right? Uh, dam storage uh, capacity, uh, poor water infrastructure, and climate change are some of the challenges that could contribute to the scarcity. Well, to delve deeper into this crisis and explore potential solutions, we speak to renowned climatologists from the uh, Global Change Institute at uh, Witts University, Professor Francois Engelbrecht. Prof, good morning to you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We really appreciate you waking up this early, but not the most pleasant of conversations that we're having here, right? I remember a few years ago when we were talking about day zero in Cape Town and in the Western Cape, people were genuinely terrified. But if you allow me to go back to the basics, what day zero would actually mean? Let's start there. Good morning, Naledi. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, my contribution to the discussion is very much along the lines of what happened in Cape Town, where the day zero drought, as it became known, was in fact induced by a long-lasting drought. So effectively, I think technically we refer to a day zero event as, as, a, as a certain stage that is reached when dam levels become so low. In the case of Cape Town, it was from the Tierwaters Kloof Dam that water can no longer be provided to the city from a specific dam. So for a while, a dam would effectively be decommissioned. And um, in the integrated Vaal River system, it's also possible that a long-lasting drought can affect the levels of the different big dams we have to such an extent that the dam through which Gauteng um, receives its water, the Val Dam, that its level falls to about 20% or lower. And for the Val Dam, that's, that would be the day zero level because at that point, from that point onwards, it can no longer supply Gauteng with water for two reasons engineering reasons, we won't be able to get the water pumped uphill to Johannesburg, for example, at that low level. And secondly, the water quality becomes so bad that you can't, you can't purify the water for human consumption. Mm. So there's a critical level in our dams um, where they can no longer provide the cities with water. And that is what we, from an engineering point of view or technical point of view, refer to as a day zero level of, of a specific dam. Now, in Tierwater's Kloof, we, we got close, of course. It, that, that level was never reached. We escaped. We survived the day zero event in Cape Town. But, of course, now currently the focus is on the, the water scarcity yeah, up in the north, affecting the Gauteng province. Sure. Um, and, and the thing about it is when we talk about day zero, Prophet, I, I, it almost sounds, you know, close to apocalyptic in a sense, right? Because then it, then it becomes, okay, so what then can be done if five years from now, Gauteng does reach a day zero? And let's not forget that you've got uh, urbanization, so the population of Gauteng is continuously uh, growing and never stops. Yes, and Eddie, we, we, have, we need to do, of course, everything we can mm. to build resilience in terms of our ability to, to store and distribute water. We need to postpone this day zero event to as far into the future as we possibly can by doing everything right that we can do right. Because eventually climate change may bring such a long lasting drought, and that's a really frightening uh, consideration, that even if we have a perfectly managed system, we can still run out of water. Mm. That, that is an important probability we, we need to take into account as we plan for the next 10 years and the next 20 years. But on the short term, there's so much we can do. Um, I think there's also many lessons to be learned from how Cape Town handled the drought eventually. Mm. So conserving water is, of course, really important. Um, bringing down consumption per individual or per household is really important. And in that respect, for example, I see the city of Johannesburg currently really strongly communicating about this. They've stated their goal of bringing down the current the current use per capita in Johannesburg from 270 liters per day to 175. So that, that already would be a huge step forward mm. if that can be achieved. Yeah. And then these, these water losses that we are, that we are re all reading about at the moment, um, that we may be losing even more than 40% of the water that is being supplied into the municipalities 
because of leakages in pipes and because of uh, the, some of the reservoirs that are leaking. Uh, of course, some water is being stolen. So there's a huge saving to be achieved if those issues can be tackled. Mm. I've just recently seen a, a, another communication from the city of Johannesburg also stating the steps to tackle this problem. The, the third thing we can do, that takes longer, that is to build more infrastructure, to store more water and to distribute more water. And yeah, all the eyes are, of course, um, I mean, I think our eyes are all fixed on the, the second phase of the Lesotho Island scheme mm. that will add significant capacity to the integrated Vaal River system. So there are certainly things that we can do, and um, hopefully we can postpone this drought as deep into the future as we possibly can. Yeah, well, you're quoted as saying that, uh, and you've made some of those points, water losses at municipal level, uh, infrastructure uh, failure, but also electrical outages uh, would enhance the likelihood of a day zero, which is interesting because um, one would hope that perhaps where that last one is concerned, the electrical outages, that perhaps will make some progress, but there is still the infrastructure maintenance that's necessary there. Let's move on to this, though, uh, Prof, because there is also the question around what is it that people, you know, and, and residents in and of themselves can do if they have any power in their hands? Because the idea of a day zero five years from now certainly is frightening and is something that we all want to avoid. And I make the point about how in the Western Cape you were able to see quite the campaign around avoiding a day zero. And, and I wonder if in the Western Cape you are able to see people really rally, work together to save water. But if we have the same thing now, because you've got already authorities saying uh, here in Gauteng that those who do not uh, or who violate the level one water restrictions that we're dealing with now uh, will be fined. So I think there's a culture discussion, right? <laughs> I fully agree. I think the, maybe the biggest success story of the Cape Town drought and the biggest lesson we've learned is how the public eventually took responsibility for their own water consumption. So in the end, this, uh, over that 36-month period or so during which the Cape Town battled the drought, Cape, the city of Cape Town battled the drought, consumption was brought down by about 55%. And that was without resorting to any intermittent water supply. So the, the supply was always kept constant, and just at a much, much reduced level. Mm. So that was an amazing achievement, and that was the public stepping up. And we will also have to reach this stage um, in Gauteng, and, and probably sooner rather than later. There are also other things that that, that really need to be, need to be done. Um, as I've mentioned, Climate variability and long-lasting long droughts made worse by climate change yeah. can bring such a day zero event, um, science tells us, even where we really bring down consumption and where we've phased out these leakages as much as we can. And, and even in the presence of a Lesotho phase two scheme, climate change still has the potential to bring an unprecedented drought to Eastern South Africa. And therefore, it's also responsible that we do have a plan of what we are going to do if we do run into a day zero drought despite our best efforts. Mm. So we are talking here about a, a dis what would really be a disaster management plan. Yeah. And there are many things that, that we have to decide beforehand. For example, how will water allocations be reduced during a severe drought, an unprecedented drought? between agriculture, between the different municipalities, between the industries. How will we get water to our most vulnerable communities when these big heat waves strike? Yeah. That's a question we, that's already becoming more and more relevant. So also on, also on the planning side, yeah. there's much we still have to do. I've got about a couple seconds left, but I think this is important because if you if you go into various parts of the country, the challenges uh, differ, right? I mean, what you find in KwaZulu Natal, for instance, is quite different to the challenges you may so you may find uh, perhaps in the northwest province. Um, uh, how are you making these resources available and are you in conversation sharing the work that you've done um, with the various stakeholders at the various levels? Because there's local, then there's provincial and, of course, national, quite a bit of dissemination that you'd need to do um, to really share the information around um, having a, a five-year day, day zero plan. 
Yeah, I can re I can report very positive interactions across different layers of government uh, in in the recent months about this risk we are increasingly facing in a changing climate. As I've mentioned, our institute's focus is very much on the climate change contribution to yeah. this risk. But within the Department of Water and Sanitation, I think there's a real awareness of how climate change is impacting on our water resources. Um, also, within the city of Johannesburg, a really, really uh, an, an embracement of the science to yeah. try and strengthen the management plan of the city. So I think within our more rural municipalities, there's, of course, also much more to do. Mm. And uh, I, th I think a, a big issue that is currently also being discussed uh, within many municipalities right. is how to look after our elderly people. The most we need vulnerable. wave strike and, and how to get water today. Yeah, we saw images earlier of them, you know, lining up to get water. And as they get older and older, this gets more difficult. But we're going to leave it there, Prof. Thank you so much for that in, in, enlightening, insightful and also disturbing conversation. Professor Francois Engelbrecht there, who's a climatologist with the Global Change Institute. You're still